If your quill handle feels mushy or sort of pops when you initially plunge into a part, like that, then you may have an improperly set spindle nose cap. So overall this is a really good manual, it's got a lot of great information in it. I did want to point out one thing that it recommends that I disagree with, and that's this line right here. Um, Chances are you'll need to back the nose piece off slightly to align the hole with the countersink. Uh, that's not good advice, because that's how you end up building that gap between the spindle nose cap and the bearings, which causes the vertical play. So it's important to note that the spindle nose cap is supposed to provide preload for this bearing assembly right here. So in order for it to provide preload, then it has to be in contact with this bearing assembly. If the instructions are telling you to back the cap off, you're creating a gap here, this is exaggerated, but that gap is going to cause the spindle assembly here to have vertical play. If when I install it, there's no gap right here between the quill housing and the uh, spindle nose cap. Then that means it's um, bottoming out on the spindle nose cap, and there will be some gap right here. It's also worth noting that on the spindle nose here, this ring should not come in contact with this surface right here. And the way we can double check that is we can blue up this ring with a transfer blue, put it on, move it several times, and see if any of the blue from here transfers to here. I've done that already and nothing's transferring so the heights of these two surfaces will work for this assembly. So, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check to see if any bearings were damaged by the vertical play. Uh, we can do this by just feeling if there's any vibration when rotating the shaft. Right here we are getting some vibration in the upper bearing so we're going to go ahead and replace that. Okay nothing too interesting here we're just going to take this off. Okay, now we're off to the arbor press where we're going to go ahead and remove the bearing. Holding on to. Yeah, you don't want to hold on to this because it will fall. So we're just going to. Okay, now all we got to do is do the steps in reverse. I got our new bearing. Seeing which of these that will give us our best coverage. So that's going to be our
Okay. Everything's patched. All right, so we're back on the bench here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and secure them up. All right, we're done. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the spindle. Um, I'm gonna move the ram back a little bit. Okay, so the next part is to line up the splines of the spindle with the splines of the bull gear so that way we can start to press this assembly into the quilt. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and move the ram a little forward now. And we're gonna lock it. The point of moving it back was just to get a little bit more clearance while we were trying to get the spindle assembly back in here. We're not gonna use the table really to drive this thing home. Uh, it's a little dangerous. Instead, we're gonna rely on the um, <clears throat> the quill to drive this thing home when we're ready. So now, excuse me for the next few minutes while we try to just line this thing up. Okay, a little bit more violent than I wanted. Okay. And I'm just gonna bring the quill here. Notice it's just going in really easy. Bring it up. Okay, that's not going down anymore. So that's now. Okay. Now we're going to install the original spindle nose cap and we're going to look for how much clearance we have right here. And that's going to tell us whether we're bottoming out on the uh, spindle bearings like we should be okay so right now all I'm looking for is clearance and as you can see we do have clearance so this is good. 
factory spec, if this is still up to factory spec, uh, would be four thou. Set it with a four thou shim. So, actually I need to get a wrench. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take a 4,000 shim. Put that over here. That way we can see how we're doing. And we're just gonna lightly tap the assembly. And just check our shim. So we are between four and five, and that's acceptable. All right, and for the last step, we're going to insult it. the last step. Uh, the set screw was already uh, the right size so I didn't have to grind it to make it fit. <clears throat> it's just finger tight there, nothing crazy. And all this is good. So next steps would be running the machine and seeing how everything works.